Hey guys, so this is a bit of a bonus vlog because um, as I said in my vlog yesterday, uh, Diesel has been unsound. So I've been treating his leg all week and hoping that it would get better, but it has not, the swelling has not gone down. So I managed to get a vet appointment first thing this morning. So we're gonna load up now and I'm in kind of a rush, so I'm going to quickly get him loaded and then we'll chat more uh, on the way. We got him in. It actually wasn't honestly too bad. Um, that is just like the second time I loaded him. I picked him up and um, yeah, and I took him on a trail ride once. So um, we need to work a little on the loading. A little encouragement. He went right in. Um, so our um, the vet is going to be doing, probably doing an ultrasound, obviously, Ooh. I'm busy navigating our driveway. Um, so he'll probably be doing an ultrasound and um, hopefully um, it'll be good news. We'll have to see, wait and see. Anyway, I need to stop vlogging and focus on driving um, as I leave my driveway here, but um, Hopefully I'll be able to film at the clinic and then you'll get to see uh, and hear what is going on with him. Hopefully it's good news. Praying it's good news. <laughs> so guys, I'm here at Cascadia Equine Veterinary Clinic with Dr. Wycliffe. And it's, he's very kindly squeezed us into his schedule. And he's giving Diesel a little once over. So when I um, started working him in January, he had a very like prominent weather um and uh just no butt and all the work he's definitely his top line has built up and muscled up so yeah, he's he looks, i mean he's definitely lacking but he's yeah he's he's, he's, he's so. way better than he was yeah what do you have him on diet with so i have him on the pro force um i think it's called professional pro force mm -hmm. uh he's he's gets three full scoops a day yeah. He gets a scoop of alfalfa pellet soaked and he gets um, about four flakes of hay. Okay. Do I need to up that or do you think that's... You could probably add a little more protein into the diet. And you can do that with some more alfalfa in the system. Okay. Um, or... You could do it using a supplement like Super Sport. Um, either one is kind of fair. Super Sport is basically a whey protein, so it's what the bodybuilders use, and it works really well. Thank you. So we just checking for a microchip. So that would be typical location. It can migrate sometimes. So especially if they're put in by inexperienced people and <laughs> so Dr. Wycliffe agrees that he probably is not a thoroughbred. Not. Do you guys do the testing? Uh, 
as far as chipping like, or no the genetic testing we can you can do it yourself simply just pull some main hair yeah and we can do that for you and then you send it into davis it's like a hundred bucks oh okay so it's cheap yeah so yeah that way. i mean we can do it for you but it, you can do it yourself too. yeah yeah so, super easy so that way i mean it's very possible he's a thoroughbred either way if he was registered he'd be chipped so I don't think he's he snuck in. Under what the do you know? Uh, can you check his teeth and see what age he is? Sorry, I'm having you. <laughs> but he's a little uh, sedated right now for the ultrasound. Right, let's see. Yeah, early teens. So if you look at this side, <laughs> I'm gonna. That's Galvin's groove right there. Yeah. And it comes in typically 11, 12 and then gets longer and longer and longer. By the time it's down here, they're usually in their early 20s. Okay. So he's early teens, yeah. 12, 13, 14 maybe. Somewhere in that ballpark. Good boy. I know this is good. Yeah, he's still got cups <laughs> in his threes. Stars on his threes there. Yeah, early teens. Yeah. So, so I was told about 13. Yeah. yeah. That matches up pretty quick. So good they heal very nicely typically and um, are typically not actually not limiting as far as potential goes so. Did you grab the oh. sorry let's go on the table <laughs> learned a long time ago always take your watch off it's like it's filled with ultrasound gel everywhere <laughs> Otherwise. the last time i had a horse have an ultrasound it was to see the baby inside <laughs> that was far That's more fun, fun. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> yeah. Oh, see that little baby that little baby is now Three years, almost three years old. He'll be three in May. How fun! Sound very nicely. So that's the back of the knee? Yep, so that's the back of the knee. What we have is superficial flexor tendon right here. This is our deep flexor tendon, so skin is that bright white right there. That's an artery. This is an artery. And this is chest ligament right here, that's kind of big amorphous mass. Yeah. And then we're too high on him right now to get to a suspensory. His suspensory will come up right here. This hard white that's right here is bone. So on him, let's see if we can bring his head this way. Let's see if we can get him to straight and go. That's a much better picture. So we want the check ligament to kind of look like this. And it's actually this whole mass right here. It's pretty yeah. big. And what he's got in the middle of it is muscle, but it's also got a hole right there. I see it, yeah. So that does not belong there. So what would, is that, would that be a tail? Yeah. yeah. So, and it's high up in there. It does course down, it's right there. Dude, I need you to stand on this. See if you can push him back, maybe. There you go, that's good. Yeah, right there. It's 
right up here. Yeah. So, and this is lateral side. So the little blue dot matches this on the probe. Okay. So outside to outside. That way I know which side of the yeah. we're on. So when we're looking. So, which also matches his swelling. So. So, so you're thinking like suspensory. So this is yeah. suspensory down here. This is check again, deep superficial up there. Okay. Yeah. So is it look to you? Does it look like it's an old injury or a new? It's 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 acute on old is what it is. So he, I think he had an old injury. See the bright white here? Yeah. That's um, scar tissue. So okay. that's old, but he's got a tear in and around it. So he probably, scar tissue doesn't stretch. So what happened, just trying to make up a story as far as, you know, how in the world did he do this? Yeah. My guess is he probably had an old injury, maybe even as a foal. And he um, either popped up in the stall or did something stupid in the paddock or who knows. There you go. And fix your feet. And then it just, because of the and weakness because, that was there already. Well, the problem with scar tissue is it's actually stronger than the ligament. It, uh, it, it just but it has doesn't no stretch. Give. Yeah. It doesn't stretch. So the, what, what happens is typically think, things fail around it because it's a, it's a really tight band in front of or around something that can move. Yeah, so kind of that whole mass is disrupted, check. The good news is his tendons are not affected. So his deep and his superficial are not, and neither is the suspensory, at least at this level anyway. Okay, so, what are my options? <laughs> yeah, so what we have for those of you who weren't in on everything, he has basically done a bow of half of his um, check ligament. And the check ligament is a structure that is used to help hold the tendons and ligament structures in the back of the leg uh, solid during the flight phase so that they don't wobble all over the place. And then more importantly, it keeps everything tight and locks the knee backwards, the carpus backwards, during sleep. So that's what allows horses to sleep standing up, is it's part of that apparatus. So what he did was he actually tore those fibers. He had a core of scar tissue down the middle of that tear. And I think what happened was he probably had an injury as a foal, uh, maybe, or a yearling, two-year-old, whatever. Um, but probably as a young horse that caused that core of scar tissue to form. Scar tissue doesn't stretch. When it gets um, tort in a case like this, what happens is everything around it fails. And that's exactly what happened here is everything around this thing failed. So we have a couple of options. One is what we call benign neglect, which means that we just don't really do much to it. Um, he's past the wrapping stage at this point. He's really past the cold phase or heat and cold phase um, as far as moving anti the anti or moving the inflammation out of there. We do put them on anti-inflammatories. We put them on to stall, small paddock rest, and kind of see what we get in four to six months. Okay. Next option is kind of the next step up. We do that with kind of concerted physical therapy starting in about three to four weeks and kind of see where we go with just really kind of physical therapy, helping keep everything stretched out, allowing things to heal in a more linear fashion. He's gonna replace all this with scar tissue, not with ligament. That doesn't happen. We don't have that capability right now to be able to bring new ligament cells back into here. Next step up from there would be to start into a regenerative therapy regime. And that can be as simple as running a laser on it uh, once a week or twice a week, or doing something like shockwave, which is high frequency ultrasound. Both of those are used to help him remember that this area is injured 
and to stimulate the stem cells that are in that area to help fix it and put it back together again. Next step above that is for us to actually start injecting him locally with some form of regenerative therapy. And in that, we've got a couple of options. We can do platelet-rich plasma. We can do a product called ProStride. Both of those come from the horses themselves. They're actually blood products. So we pull the blood from them, we spin it down and um, condense it down, pull the platelets out, and then we take those platelets and inject them back into that area. Platelets carry all the healing factors, so what we're doing is we're jump-starting the healing process by using either one of those. Really, the biggest difference between PRP and ProStride is how concentrated they are. PRP is a pretty diffuse product, whereas ProStride is very concentrated, up to 10 to 20 times more concentrated. So we're getting more platelets in a, very, in a much smaller area. Uh, using something like ProStride. And I think he would be a good candidate for something like ProStride, depending on where we are money-wise. The next step up above that is to go to kind of our newest round of regenerative therapies. Um, stem cells fall into that category. I don't think he's a good candidate for stem cells. Number one, they're relatively expensive. Number two, it means we got to make another hole in him somewhere else to be able to harvest his own stem cells. Um, and in injuries like this, I've tried them. Um, for whatever reason, ProStride, which is much, much, much easier and two to four times cheaper, uh, we actually get better results for whatever reason. So I don't think stem cells, just because I'm sure somebody out there is going to hit you with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> that well, we definitely want cheaper is better. <laughs> yeah. That's so, for yeah. sure. Um, in that respect. Yeah. Next step up from that is uh, there are a couple of products which are basically amnion based now. So they get harvested from thoroughbred foals at birth. So they take the amnion, which is the sac that's around the foal. Yeah. It's harvested. Uh, there's a company that is now taking those products and pulling the healing factors out of the stem cells that are in the amnion. And the amnion is packed full of stem cells. Mm -hmm. So they take all of these little exosomal uh, packets, clean them up, make sure that they don't have any biomarkers for what horse they came from. That allows us to put them into any horse. They're freeze dried and then we actually get their shelf stable. So we actually carry them on the shelves. They've just really kind of come into uh, use in the US this last year. We've got more than 100 horses with it right now, and my vote is there. Their problem is they're a brand new product, which puts them at the top tier as far as cost goes uh, yeah. that way. The plus is um, we're healing, healing, that, uh, healing faster than anything else I've ever used before in my life. It's pretty amazing. Uh, cutting healing times almost by half, okay. actually, as far as what we're seeing. Now we're not putting those horses back to full work, right? Obviously, yeah. But what it does enable us to do is step up the PT earlier, and so it does save us time on the backside because we can work in a full PT regiment months earlier than what right. we would have been doing before. Yeah. yeah. So that way. So from that aspect, those are our choices. Okay. Um, we can talk about costs off camera. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> And then we can kind of go from there as far as, you know, yeah. realistically for a horse like him, is there a right and a wrong? Mm, I don't know if there is. It, it's most just of it the comes amount, it's the time. And time. Time, yeah. And, you know, kind of where you want him to be. And right now he's pretty much an unknown as right. the, what we want him to be. Yeah. So that opens him up. If he was an advanced level eventer. Then, and destined to hopefully go off and do great things, then the answer is Which is unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> because so. his mom is not, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. a little bit old and timid at right. this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, and yeah. he's also not truly a novice horse. Right. At this stage of the game. So, no. you know, that puts us somewhere in that nebulous yeah. middle. Yeah. And uh, that just comes down to what you can afford and, and where you want to go time commitment. Okay. So that's Thank the you. easiest way to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've spoken to the vet and we're going to try some laser. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give him a little laser treatment right now and hope that that helps with the healing. He's still very sedated, so he's been very sweet. <laughs> 
is having his little bit of laser therapy. You can see just on that area. And that um, Dr. Wickliff said that um, it basically uh, cons the the leg into thinking it's getting re-injured and that makes all the little um what are they what are those things called that go to fight the scene of the crime <laughs> anyway the little healing cells go rushing in well i got our boy loaded he is recovered enough from his uh happy juice maybe <laughs> he is ready to uh make the journey home uh, shame. He was pretty uptight. Pretty, the adrenaline was pumping. He was pretty stressed, which is uh, why they he had to be sedated for the ultrasound. Um, he is a big boy, and when he decides like he just wants to go, then you better watch out. So uh, after running Dr. Wickliffe and his assistant over a couple of times, we were like, no, it's better that he gets a little happy juice. So. Anyway, uh, after that, he was he was awesome. He was great, and um, it's good. We now have answers. Obviously, it's not the best news, but it's certainly better than what I had hoped that what I had thought was wrong with him. Um, so I think it'll be a little bit of a shorter recovery time, and at least we have a plan going forward. Once a week, I'll take him back to the clinic for his laser treatment, which is literally like. I don't know, like not even five minutes. So it's a pain, but um, it's a lot cheaper than having a call out fee and having the vet come out here to do it. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, thank you so much for your support and your kind words from our last uh, vlog. And um, we just keep moving forward and um, hopefully the laser treatment will do the job and expedite the healing and we'll soon have him back in work again anyway if you like this vlog remember to give it a thumbs up uh subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell if you want to be notified i post videos like this um once a week and um i'm just so grateful for everyone who's coming on this journey with me i'll see you next week <laughs>